Good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on which part of the world you're listening in from. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, I'm Blackbright and I broadcast from the United Kingdom around the world into your homes, onto your phones. So you're welcome if it's the first time you're passing to hit the thumbs up, the thumbs down. You're welcome to subscribe and you're welcome to share. Um, yes, I wanted to do a news roundup today of sorts. It's going to be pretty long, I think, although I'm going to try and keep it as concise as possible. But I can't guarantee that because sometimes I go in a rant and I start giving my opinions and it starts going on longer than I expected. But for those of you who know me, you know what to expect. OK, let's start off with the new health protection regulations corona virus protection act which has been passed and what that does it restricts access to open spaces public paths and land currently in wales and derbyshire i believe i'm not quite sure if it's in you know the inner city or anything like that but um that has been passed and couples who were in Wales and they went out to this remote area were identified by the police a drones unit. Now, they were using social distancing. It was their family. I think there was three, maybe four, two couples. And they were in the middle of nowhere. So it's not like they can contaminate anyone. But the next thing you know, please come down, move them along. And apparently um, they had, to, you know, I don't know who had to apologise, but they had to apologise because, you know, they were following Boris Johnson's instructions that, you know, you need to be two metres apart. I mean, at least six feet apart or whatever it is. Some people say it's two feet. Um, medical professionals say it should be six feet, especially if people are coughing and sneezing. You know, because sneezing brings out the aerosols and coughing brings out the droplets. So you don't want to be near anyone who's exhibiting those signs. But ordinarily, you should be able to go in vast open spaces and, you know, exercise or whatever it is you do. So they've got police drone units that are policing people who are coming out and all the way in the middle of Wales. They pick, it, pick them up and the police came and moved them on. So like I said, they were allowed, I think they, you know, they more or less reiterated what Boris Johnson said. And that's why I said it's not clear. On the one hand, he's saying, you know, you know, I'm telling you to stay home. And then on the other hand, he's saying, well, you can go out with just twos and you can go out and exercise. It has to be one or the other because people will interpret it the way they want. So that's that. So, um, so the couples were moved on by police and just be aware that there are drones. Don't be thinking that, you know, you're looking out to see if anybody's looking or if the police are around or the army are around, the drones are around. OK. Um, yeah, we're being forced into a behavioural change um, and we'll all start conforming as days go on. Foreign nationals whose visas expire between the 24th of January 2020 and the 31st of May 2020 can stay until the 31st of May if the borders to the countries that they live in or are meant to be returning to are closed. Now, in order to do that, you have you can't just stay, even though they're saying there's been an extension. You can't just stay and think, oh, well, I can stay until the 31st of May. No, there is a protocol. You have to email C for Charlie, H for Hotel, I for India, CHI, stands for the Corona Virus Immigration. And then it's their team. So it's CHI at home office, one word, dot gov, G O V, dot UK. So you have to email them if your visa expired between the 24th of January 2020 and the 31st of May. OK, and you provide them the full name, your date of birth, your nationality, your previous visa reference and why you can't go back. 
i.e. like Italy, they've got, you know, it's locked down, you can't go into the country. So make sure you do that because if you don't do that, you're not going to be protected. Okay? Okay, an 80-year-old lung cancer patient told to drive 35 hours to Ukraine. 80 years old, you know, lung cancer patient told to drive to Ukraine. Her visa ran out on the 15th of March and she was told to drive to Ukraine. And what she said was that, but um, Boris Johnson said that if you're over 70, you have to isolate. You have to self-isolate. You know what the Home Office official told her? That applies to UK nationals only. It doesn't apply to foreign nationals. You're supposed to use every possible endeavour to get back to your country. If that means taking four, four or five different diversions and you're 80 years old, so be it. Well, he didn't say that, but what I, I'll tell you exactly what he said. The home official said those instructions apply to UK nationals only and they expect foreign nationals to make every effort to return home. So this lady, she's been back and forth um, from Ukraine to the UK 20 times in her lifetime. She's never overstayed. So it's not like she's an habitual overstayer or anything like that. And yet she was forced to pay £2,000 to have her visa extended in a situation that's not her fault. That's not fair. I don't believe that's fair. So um, the elderly are the most lucrative, and the thing is, we we know. I mean, from you know, from what we see that and what we hear, that you know, in this prioritization, the elderly are at the bottom, and yet they're the most lucrative. They're the and that's probably why they are at the bottom. They are the first ones to, that, that they don't want to help when they're offering medical assistance. Those are the ones that they feel um, need less intervention. So these are the ones that own homes, probably with no mortgages. Probably they have lots of savings. They've worked all their lives. All they want is to um, stay home and do whatever they need to do. Maybe go on their little cruises or whatever it is. And yet these are the ones who are deemed a nuisance and are considered to be draining the pension pot because they're living too long. So the way um, that lady, that 80 year old was treated is testament of that. I wonder if that was his mother. Would he say that? Drive 35 miles to Ukraine, to 35 hours to Ukraine. Very, very sad. So, um, what else have I got here? Um, yeah, any businesses thinking about taking on that 330 billion? Well, a portion of it that's been set aside for businesses, the loan guarantee for businesses. Well, what the banks are willing to do, only if you cough up 20%, then they apply for the 80%. But you have to cough up the, 80, the 20% first. Invest that in your business. As long as you've got the 20%, they'll then apply for the 80%. The thing is, for businesses in this time, this climate, it's not going, it's going to be very risky for them to take up 20% and then take that 80% loan. And then if anything goes wrong and the business goes under, they'll seize assets. They won't seize the primary home, but they will seize assets like your cars, your, you know, any kind of assets that you have. I mean, like I, I always refer to, don't, if you don't pay, take it away. They'll look for things in your house that are worth something that they can sell so that they can recoup that money. So, yeah, you have to fork out 20% first. Um, and then I was watching Trevor Noah's interview. He was interviewing Dr. Anthony Forsey, an infectious disease expert who claims the coronavirus, like we know, is a, resp is a respiratory born illness that is worse than Ebola. Apparently it spreads easily 
It's devastating for the elderly, which we know, and those with underlying conditions. Italy was hit hard because apparently they're one of the Euro European countries which have a high, um, a lot of elderly people, it's like an older population or an aging population. Um, he, adv he, he advised avoid handshakes. Now, you don't think about that. And I was watching um, a video with um, Trump and he, I don't know how old it is, it was probably before the coronavirus, but it is instinctive for um, not necessarily, well, let's say professionals. Well, most people, when you meet somebody for the first time, you shake their hand. You wouldn't think, you wouldn't, you wouldn't stop and think, oh, I wonder if they've sneezed uh, before holding my hand. I wonder what they've done with their hands. I mean, I wonder if they had a handkerchief. And I mean, some people will sneeze, they go, Shh, and that's all they do. Sometimes the sneeze comes out so quickly, they don't have time to get a handkerchief. And as far as they're concerned, providing there's no snot coming out of their nose, they don't even bother. It's like it's lost and forgotten. But that aerosol spray is what can cause the coronavirus for other people. And then especially if they sneeze and they put their hand up and all those droplets go on their hands and then they shake hands with somebody else. What do you think that does? Now, what he did say was that with the post, you know, they were talking about, oh, what about posts coming through your door? Should you worry about that? He reckons the surface of mail, you know, what they put stuff in. I don't know. I mean, sometimes you get people who, um, you know, like you buy something from eBay. They don't normally use the traditional um, packaging. But, you know, things like envelopes and everything like that, if you get those plastic packaging, of course, then you'd have to wipe it off with your, um, your wipe or spray or whatever you need to do with it. But, you know, the general letters and stuff, he reckons you don't have to worry about that because it won't live on that kind of surface. These are just, I'm just kind of transferring information that he said, I can't guarantee that it's true. Okay, so I'm just kind of reiterating. So apparently um, a lot of these um, things that people are talking about, washing, flushing themselves with water, eating garlic and um, um, hot baths and inhaling stuff, apparently none of that is really effective or proven to be effective. Even, you know, yesterday I said that that guy, Didier um, Rayol, was talking about he had found a cure that chloroquine, this guy is now saying, it's not, it hasn't been proven. And, you know, when I spoke about that, um, Didier Lloyd, Rayol, um, associating his name with, um, Af you know, with the vaccine going out to Africa first, even though there's least, um, there's a least amount of, um, deaths in Africa. It was probably triggered. I don't know, maybe somebody knows about what happened in 1920 and thought it might be clever to assign it to Didier Raoul, or he actually said it, but I just can't find the source. Because what happened in 1920 was that, like the first wave like now of influenza reeked through the country and Africa hardly had any deaths. Just like now, they've I think I don't know how many deaths they've got now because I didn't check, but they didn't hardly had any deaths. And then when the second wave came, which they're anticipating with us having a second more terrible wave, um, I don't know if it's going to be a year's time or even sooner than a year. But in the second wave, Africa lost two point four million people who died within six months. So I think that either Raul, um, either Didier Raul said that and I can't find the source or somebody else knows that information from, from um, before what happened um, before and they've assigned it to Didier Raul, you know, and made it look like he said it. I don't know. But the fact that, that, those, that those numbers are, are real and can be verified. You know, you've got to do is check it, you know, influenza and the impact of it on Africa and how many people died. 
So, um, so that's probably where that came from. What else did I want to say? Um, currently, no proven effective therapy. Clinical trials are ongoing. And a tornado ripped through Arkansas. I don't know how many of you are watching here from America um, and have family in Arkansas. I understand there was no death, so that's a relief for you guys, even though the devastation at this particular time must be quite serious. 22 people injured, I heard as of, I think, yesterday. I don't know if those figures have changed. But yeah, you know, our sympathies go out to people who's got caught out. The, play, the, the city in our Kansas is called Jonesboro, and it's the fifth largest city in our Kansas. So I'd imagine that there's a lot of people affected, but all the houses are knocked down. And I mean, is that, that's all you need, isn't it? When you've got a lockdown for your house to be swept off and all your businesses and everything just blown away through a, by a tornado but i tell you something natural disasters contrived disasters whatever the disasters things will happen this world has got to be destroyed because it's just gone too bad so you know whatever man doesn't do god will take over and that's the reality and a lot of lives are going to be lost um, Trump deploys the defense, the Defense Production Act, which was enacted on September the eighth, nineteen fifty, in response to the start of the Korean War, to streamline production of medical supplies and equipment, and will require businesses to sign contract or fulfil orders deemed necessary for national defense. Mm. Trump says, "If we need to use it, we'll be using it." And Trump said it's full speed ahead. Apparently, General Motors are to produce ventilators for U.S. medical system. Trump has signed a memorandum instructing the Department of Health and Human Services to use any and all authority available. Under the Defense Production Act to require General Motors to accept, perform and prioritize federal contracts for ventilators. They're expecting 10,000 critical care ventilators a month. Trump does not plan to let New York have ventilators. Um, government, Governor Cuomo tried to order 30,000 and apparently Trump feels he's done with the few ventilators he's had so far. So apparently before this crisis, he had a few ventilators and... Um, Apparently, he's not being allowed any more. So um, the, the ventilators are for those persons whose lives are worth saving. That's my interpretation. So any, if, you, if your life is deemed not worth saving, you're not, you're not going to be saved. If you're costing the government money, if you are... Um, a drain on resources if you're not working um, it could be a host of different reasons why certain people feel that the hierarchy of need is for certain people and not for others so one in four have lost their jobs in America or have been furloughed um, so that is high, isn't it? One in four. Trump is not paying Meghan and Harry security protection. How embarrassing they had to go to Donald Trump and ask for security. I mean, don't they know that he just doesn't like the fact that Harry has married a mixed race girl? I mean, as far as Trump is concerned, serves you bloody right. If you've married down, you live down. That's the way he's looking at it. He's looking at the fact that she she's black. And, you know, this is how black people live. And you've married a black girl, so, you you know, you, you get on with it, mate. We're not protecting you. But I don't understand, really, what they need protection for, security for. It's not like... 
Well, I guess they might have a bit of dosh, but I can't imagine anyone um, trying to hurt them. But you just never know. We've got turmoil coming up. We've got people. It's going to get frantic. So anything, anything is possible. But it must have been so embarrassing for them to go to Donald Trump and then he tells them, no, he's not going to provide it. And then it's all over the news. Oh, how humiliating. But the price you pay. And the thing is, the world changes so quickly. You know, who would have thought that in a month's time, everything would change so drastically? It's just like, it's like a lot of people are saying it's surreal. It's like a dream. They can't believe it. A lot of people are in that stage of denial. And I'm going to do a video called Death of a Lifestyle. And I'm going to take you through those um, those stages that you are probably going through in a separate video. So I'm not going to talk about that now. OK, the emergency payment stimulus check in the USA. It's a bit like the self-employed rescue package in the UK. What you what you'll receive will be based on the 2019 tax return. And if you don't and if you didn't submit it, it will be based on 2018 figures. Now, people might be saying, why the hell is she talking about United States stuff when she's a UK? She, she lives in the UK. She's born in the UK because a lot of what happens in the United States ends up happening in the UK. So we kind of get a sneak preview of what to expect in the UK. So when I'm sharing this information with you, that is the reason why I'm sharing it. OK, so those on Social Security will qualify as long as they've received their SSA-10994. Single adults with a, an income of 75000 will get 1200 It seems like a hell of a lot of money. 75 grand. I don't understand that. Married couples with an income of 150000 will get 2400 I'm probably not interpreting this right because that can't be salaries. Single parents who file as head of household with an income up to 112000 will get 1200 plus $500 in addition per child. Now, they don't have the age restrictions like the UK because, remember, we have those who are under 25 and those who are over 25. They don't, have, they don't seem to have that. Those who are not eligible for the um, emergency payment or the stimulus check, what it's known like in the UK, in the USA, are those with no secure social security card number, non-resident aliens, well, that makes sense, non-US citizens, US nationals without a green card won't get it. And remember, there was a lot, there was this, you know, they were trying to get their green cards quite a while ago and a lot of them were being rejected and they weren't being able to get it. And there was this long line and there was, you know, solicitors or lawyers trying to appeal and trying to get their green card. So there's going to be a lot of vulnerable people who didn't get their green card. And a lot of those green cards weren't renewed. So when they ran out, ordinarily, they would be renewed. A lot of them weren't renewed. And those who have not passed the substantial presence, presence test. So currently there's 3.3 million Americans who filed a jobless claim. I think ours was 110,000 last count. Hospital beds to be expanded to 140,000. They expect for half of the city to be infected. Oh, gosh, I'm telling you, mate. It's not easy. It's not easy. Um, it's not easy at all. Yeah, and I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Like I said, I'm going to do another video called Death of a Lifestyle. It'll be interesting because we're all going to go through the five stages. And I just want you to be aware of what those five stages are. So when it happens... You won't think, oh, it's unusual. It's not unusual. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.